who's the best improviser? I'm going to go with your future starter, Greeny, in New York, Zach Wilson, who has this never-say-die mentality on the field. He's the kind of player that might run five yards backwards or throw the football 50 yards forward. He's creative. He's very athletic. He's fearless. Zach Wilson is the kind of player that, on occasion, can overcome some offensive line struggles. All right, next up is mobility. Dan Orlovsky, which of these quarterback prospects has the best mobility? Yeah, I'm going to say Trey Lance, and it's for three reasons. One, his mobility is tied to physicality. He's a big-time physical runner with the football. And then I'll say long speed. He's also very fast once he gets into the open the field. And third is elusivity. He's very elusive with the ball. And so you're talking about a guy that's got all three of those traits that you love with mobility. I'm going to say Trey Lance from North Dakota State. And I love elusivity. It's better than elusiveness. Finally, Mike Tannenbaum, <laughs> which is the most accurate quarterback in this draft? Yeah, it's Mac Jones. And I'm going to give you two remarkable statistics why. He had over 70 completions of 20 yards or more, which is just incredible. And accuracy is well beyond completion percentage. He yeah. created over 2,400 yards after catch, Greeny. And I know they have great receivers, but you have to have pinpoint accuracy for your receivers to be able to make that many plays once they catch it. Well, that is his calling card. And, and Mac Jones, who's obviously been dissected, as all these guys have, was on Paul Feinbaum's show yesterday, and, and they got into this. And this is a really interesting statement. Go ahead, play that. For me, it's just focusing on what I can control, and that's doing really well in my Zoom meetings and, and working out hard and throwing and stuff. So, honestly, that sounds like an Alabama answer, but um, – it is what it is, and they're going to say what they're going to say. But if you watch the tape, it's it's good tape. So, okay, mm. that's the point. Is it good tape? Is it great tape? Dan Orlovsky has the tape. Show us, Mac Jones. Yeah, it's the best tape in this draft, Greeny. Okay, it's the best tape. And I think the understanding is this. Quarterbacks need to have the ability to survive and then thrive. Mac Jones shows that just here. Okay, the pass concept is going to be a three-man concept. You're going to have a deep crossing route, a slot seam or clear out, and then a big in. Now, the progression for the quarterback is really one to two. This is a high-level alert, especially versus man coverage. You're going to have a guy running away from the defender, and then you really get to number two, the in route. But focus on the slot receiver, okay? The slot receiver is sometimes an alert for a quarterback. Now, why is it only an alert? Because his job is really to clear out a safety. Now, if they were in two safeties, if Missouri's defense had two safeties, run through the inside shoulder. Get that safety to clear out and might open up the in route. Now, if they're in one high safety, which Missouri is, run through his inside shoulder to make sure he cannot overlap for that deep crossing route. This is when Mac Jones shows you I can not only survive, but my mind allows me to thrive. Okay, so I told you that crossing route was number one. This is a great opportunity. You got man coverage. Here comes this receiver running away. But this safety started on that hash, right? Now, this is difficult for a quarterback because this defender can trail underneath on that crossing route. When that happens, quarterback has to throw the ball with some touch to get it over that defender. But you can't because that safety is right there. He can play over the top. Throw's going to be nearly impossible. Now that brings us to this slot receiver because his job is to run through that safety unless that safety leaves. If he leaves, go replace him. Now, quarterback, you've got to see it the same way. Since you can't make this throw, make this throw, but it has to be on time. Mac Jones is staring this way, seeing that safety. Now, you, as a quarterback, if you are going to make that throw, make it before he spins around and can make that play. That ball is out right now. This safety is just starting to spin. You've got to bleed this receiver just to the middle of the field and get that ball there before the safety can collapse and make that play. Bang, bang, right there. Watch how quickly Mac Jones actually does this, okay? It's great to see it from the back angle. He's going to shuffle, side, step into his throw, and make it within one hitch. Watch how quickly happens. Shuffle, step, throw, and you tell me that timing doesn't matter in this moment. That is absolutely perfect for Mac Jones. Listen. Playing quarterback is definitely about or done with the body, but is always clearly going to be about the mind. And Mac Jones has a special one. That, that is really, really good. That's Jalen Waddle making that catch, yeah. by the way, who will also be a high pick in this draft. Paul Feinbaum jumps in with us here. That was his interview you did yesterday. What, what more can you tell us about that? Like where, you know, the, like all the players, they get picked and prodded and, and, and taken apart at this time of year. How, how would you describe where Mac Jones' head is at here two weeks from the draft, Paul? 
I would say super chill right now, Greeny. I mean, it was just, it, he, was, he was almost impossible to interview because Saban would have been easy to, easier to break down. He reminded me a little bit of, of like the valedictorian at the Kellogg Business School at your alma mater at Northwestern trying to decide what to do next. Do I take a, the seven-figure job from Apple or Amazon? Do I go to Europe for a year? Do I go to law school and become a Supreme Court justice? I mean, he, I have never seen a more confident guy without, ever, without, without dropping a sweat. Greeny, I mean, it was a, a, an Oscar-winning performance yesterday. And, and, and again, the play. I mean, for those who didn't see it, I mean, the, the point that was made earlier by Field is a year ago today, no one expected Mac Jones to be in the conversation that he's in right now. How did he do it? Paul? Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was, <laughs> he did it. I was so mesmerized by, by, by his, his, his performance. Here's how he did it, Greeny. He went to school. Uh, he never quit going to school. He was learning when Jalen Hurts was there. He was learning when Tua was there. Nobody cared about him. And, and you're right about, about what you said a minute ago. Bryce Young, the phenom from L.A., was, was thought to be the starter by midseason. Not by the beginning of the year, but by midseason. And, and, and here comes Mac Jones under the radar. Uh, and, 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 and COVID helped him because there was no spring practice and, and nobody had a chance to, to, to come close to him. And when Waddle went down, he actually got better uh, because he, he turned Devontae Smith into a Heisman Trophy winner. I, I continue to believe, and Dan, I only have like 15 seconds here and we'll get back to it. I continue to believe, to the point you made earlier, that's the guy Belichick wants. And, and for all the reasons you just described, I continue to believe that. Do you think that's the guy? Would he thrive in Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniel's system? I've got just a few seconds. It depends on what Josh wants to do schematically moving forward. If he wants to go back to what he did with Jimmy Garoppolo and with Tom Brady, that makes a ton of sense. But if he doesn't, if he wants to move with what he did with Cam last year, then I don't see him in New England. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.